Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Got some Mississippi Fred McDowell going on in the background. You know, I'm working on this coffee can guitar. It's got a little bit of Route 66 uh, blended into it, probably up here. I'm going to do an episode real soon on headstocks 101, how to cut them, size them, shape them, and all that kind of thing. So look for that soon. Now, as you can see, I I have fretted the neck on this and this episode is going to be fairly short and it's going to talk about how to avoid some of the mistakes I made early on in fretting uh, the neck of your guitar. All right, couple shout outs. First off, Jeffrey Ross, you are the best dude. Thank you. You'll have a care package coming your way as well. All right, I also want to give a shout out to my friends at Amp Shop Base Exchange in North Hollywood, California, on Lancashire. There, they've got guitars, they've got amps, they've got parts, they've got strings, they got everything. So, if you're in the area, stop by on Lancashire Boulevard. You're just north of the 101. There, a couple of blocks. Amp Shop Base Exchange. All right, hey, check out my water bottle. Hey, shout out to you, Gene Gene Water Machine, baby. Thanks for keeping the nitrites, not nitrates, nitrites out of my drinking water. Hey, you know that I found this bottle somewhere. If you're the person, the first person that can tell me where I found this bottle, not you, camera person, you know, you're out, you're disqualified. Anyway, if you can tell me where I got this old bottle and you're the first person, I got something good for you. So anyway, let's quit playing around now. That should take care of the greetings for an entire year. I've been nice to people and that fills the quota. Let's hit the workbench. Okay, um, I'm in the process right now of doing this neck. I've, I've fretted it. I've uh, sanded it, did the rough grinding on it and the filing. Um, I'm able to run my fingers down the edge of the fretboard without snagging them there's some work to do there um, and first thing I want to show you is if you don't have one of these you need to uh, it's got a little belt on it you rotate it like this and you can just it's concave right here so you just do this I always get in the habit of counting how many times I do something to each fret because if you do the same thing to each fret all the way up and all the way back the likelihood that one of them is going to become uneven or or sanded more or less uh, that goes away when you try to count and stay on track and do the same thing to each fret now I, I didn't used to be careful about that so I'll be filing with this I'll be filing with this and the next thing you know I'd have a mess and when you have a mess with your frets when you're filing and things when you finally get the strings on that's where your buzz comes from that's where your dead strings come come from so we're going to talk about some of those things because the last thing you want is to string your guitar up and then you find out there's frets that aren't they're too high too low or something's wrong and I'm going to show you something first off that is the cardinal sin of some builders now I buy my fret, my fret wire uh, cut and um, one of these packages I, I end up using about four and a half of uh, these individual links to do one standard size neck and I always do 25 and a half scale I don't care if it's on a coffee can or what most guitar players have played a Gibson and that's pretty much the standard Gibson scale so when they pick up your guitar like you said whether it's a coffee can or a cigar box or whatever it's made out of they're going to be somewhat familiar with uh, that scale and, and where their hand goes but anyway back to the fret wire I use medium high nickel fret wire now do you see that written anywhere on this piece of fret wire look close okay now about five seconds has passed since I told you that I use medium high 
silver nickel fret wire. You remember that, and, and you can't see that marked on here anywhere. So I've got a few packages of this, but guess what? I got a pack of jumbo hidden in here as well. Now, let's say that I'm picking up and it's the end of the evening, and this one is laying on my bench. Now it's curved, so the likelihood is pretty bent, so the likelihood I'll get it confused with this um, is low, but let's say that I'm picking up and I'm in a hurry and I stick this with the rest of it and then I'm working on a guitar later and I've got my last two or three frets to go. Can you see me here? I don't know where I'm at in the camera. Anyway, I've used up this piece so I go looking for another piece and what do you know? There it is. I grab it, tap this in, cut this off, put the guitar together and I mean can you really, really notice that there's a huge difference? Of course you can't. So I put my guitar together and I get everything done. And no matter what I do, the strings go dead here, here. And so I go all the way down like we do. We put our fingers here and cord the thing. And we find out that everything here is fine. But then we get down here and the strings go dead. Well, if the strings are going dead down here because I got a piece of jumbo fret wire down here. They're going to start going dead way up here. I've got a mess. And then when I finally figure out what's wrong, i got to pop these out and put the right fret wire in. And by that time, I've pretty much messed up these frets. i got to use glue. I got, it, so it's a hassle. So lesson number one, know what your fret wire is. Keep it separate. I would keep it very separate. In fact, I would think about always using the same size fret wire. So I'll put that away. And make sure that everything is marked and I know what it is. Okay, I've made a couple mock-ups here. This is supposed to be a neck board. So this would be uh, this part here without this heel put on. But I've got uh, what's supposed to be a neck board. Now, I might be tempted to take my fingerboard. This goes on here. Again, this is supposed to represent this unfretted like, like this area over here, if you can see that. But I might be tempted to put my fret wire here and start fretting this fingerboard before I would actually glue it on here. I found that to be a mistake because whatever this is, whatever I've got on my bench, whatever, when I put this on, it's going to level out to the fingerboard. Now, when I glue that on to the neck, there might be something different here. Um, and if my frets are on already, it's going to change the angle of everything when I work on it. And so I always glue my fingerboard onto the neck before I fret it. So we'll put this one off to the side. And this is one that represents a fingerboard that's been glued on to a neck board here. You can see that. Okay, so uh, let's, let's start fretting with, with this piece here. Pretend that this is a, a whole fingerboard and... One of the things I've always done is I've always cut the end when I start with a piece of fret wire. Cut the end of the angle like that, you see. So when I lay that angled end, when I lay it on the, the fret board like that and line this up, I'm looking to not, I don't want to do any more filing or grinding or whatever I do than I have to. So if I lay that there, that edge is cut back in. I can take this. I can tap it like so and see I'm already there. Nothing's sticking out. Now, my friend Darren Dukes, who taught me a lot, he's always said you can take some uh, sawdust from working your fingerboard and rub it right there before you finish everything and hide those slots. And it's a nice touch. Thanks for that tip, Darren. Okay, now I'm going to show you where I've been really stupid over the years. I built a couple... <laughs> probably 10, 15, 20 guitars before I finally figured out. You see these? These are nice, right? I can get really close like that and make my cut. Well, these aren't very strong. So then I figured I got a good pair of dikes here. If they were good enough for electrical work, they got to be great for here. So what I would do is I would tap my fret in so I could leave that angle like that, you see. And then I could take this it's got a little indentation here. And because that's up a little bit, I could put that on an angle, 
cut like that, what do you know? That gives me that angle I wanted for my next fret right here like so. And then I would tap this down like so. And well, I don't really have that much to grind right there. So that worked out for me. Again, my friend Darren Dukes kept telling me, dude, why are you killing yourself and not getting yourself a good pair uh, of fret wire cutters? Well, of course, I didn't listen. I went on and on. Anyway, I finally listened to him. And uh, let me show you what, what's going on here. Again, I've got that angle like that. I slide that up to the end. I tap it. Now, I don't have to worry about cutting an angle or leaving that up or whatever. I just tap this a couple times like that. And I got a pair of these. Incredible. I just go like this. See, it's right to the edge. Bing. Look at that. Now, you can see it took me a lot less time to do that. And the other thing I've noticed about that is regardless of how careful I was with these, I was, was always ending up with a pile of these cutoffs at the end. And you know that three or four of those make another full piece of fret wire here for one of these slots. So I don't know why I was so stubborn, but thanks for that tip. Really helped me out. Now, when you're tapping these in, you don't got to beat on these like uh, you're trying to ring the bell at the carnival or something. You just tap this in and go along and try to be smooth and even and give it even pressure. Um, because if you're beating on them too hard, you're gonna flatten out the crown of the fret and that's not gonna work out for you. So just be reasonable with your pressure and just tap them in like that. These things have tangs on them. Let me see, this is a small piece. They got tangs on them that help them hold in. Um, I used to try and glue them in. I don't do that anymore. And uh, there you go. And finally, when it comes to working the ends and getting this ground down, I'm going to level with you. I take this, first thing I do is take this side to a belt sander and just bzzz, like so. Um, the belt sanding belt is, uh, the belt sander belt is long enough that I can put the whole uh, fret board on it and just lightly go up and down and just then I can feel like this. And then I might just roll it in just a little bit on the belt like so. I'll show you that technique in a second here where it just puts the slightest edge on this. Don't want to get too deep into it where I'm tearing all this up. If you start seeing your finishes changing color, something you're getting too deep into it. But again, the main thing is uniformity and how you treat this and roll it on the belt sander if you're, if you're going to do it that way. Okay, real quick on the belt sander again. If you if you're new at this or you don't you're not comfortable with this, uh, that's okay. If you're going to use this, make sure your grid is right. You don't want to use a real heavy grid to do this. But you can see that nothing's sticking out here a lot. Maybe some there. That's the end I cut with the with the pliers. I was careful to pound those in right. But when I click on the belt sander, you're going to see that I'm just going to try and float this to level it out like this, flip this over and do this. And when I can see that it's smooth, then I'm going to start rolling like this. So let me do that. I'm going to turn the sound down so you don't have to listen to the belt sander. And let's see what this looks like. not going to do it on a belt sander you don't want to uh, do that right away if you're new at this and you're going to use a file what you want to do is you want to avoid when you're working it on the side to be working one one uh, fret at a time you want to use a file that's big enough where you can come cover a number of frets and lay it across the board like this so you can see that I've got a big file here I don't know what the camera looks like, but I can run this whole thing like this. 
And again, I want to count my strokes and make sure that I'm not hung up on one because the more you're able to address all of the frets, the more likely they are, they are to be uniform at the end. So this one works this way. So again, lay your file diagonally as much as possible where you hit as many frets as possible and then do this. Now when it comes to the fine tuning, you're going to be able to take a file like this maybe and again count. You're going to do a little bit of this, one or two strokes along the side of the fret, but mainly you're trying to get this bevel right here so when somebody's sliding their fingers up and down it doesn't snag or cut them. Now this gizmo uh, next to these frat cutters, this has been a lifesaver for me because it has belts on it. You, you just squeeze it together like this and you can roll this and there's a little concave here. So when you're filing your frets and doing the fine work on this, you're just doing this and this is a great tool. So one more time, don't mix up your frat wire. You get one or two frets in here that aren't the right size. It's going to take you forever to figure it out. You don't have to try and use tools that are going to waste frat wire. Um, and just go ahead and buy a pair of these right away. Um, and and believe me, at the end of the day, you'll you'll love it. I mean, if you really have to teach yourself how much you're going to love it, go ahead and buy this stuff and use this stuff and and beat yourself up. Next thing, you don't have to beat these things to death. Just tap them in. I don't have to use glue. Again, they have tangs on them like so that hold them in. And the best tip I can give you is the files you use, make sure that they're long enough to address a number of frets at the same time. Don't try to do your end finish work with a, with a, a file this big, but start thinking about getting one of these gizmos where you can just do that. All right, so let's end this episode. Uh, I'm going to get back to work on this. I've got some cutout to do here and some sanding and stuff and some graphics to do. And when I do all that, I'm going to be talking to you about the neck. Uh, it, you'll, you'll like that episode, believe me. Now, don't forget, don't make the same mistakes I did, especially when it comes time to put in the investment in the tools that you're going to need. They're going to pay off in the long run. Uh, send me an email. I like your comments. And don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you soon.